I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, as we travel along this journey, this road that we call life, you're guaranteed to hit some bumps, some curves, some unexpected twists in the road. Well, navigating those twists, those bumps, those curves is the secret to life. Mark Murray has spent a lot of time thinking about all of this, and he has put together a book that is appropriately titled called Why. It is written by Mark Murray. It is available online, and uh, we are delighted to have Mark join us here today on Spotlight. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Mark. Thanks for having me. You have an interesting life. You are a writer. You are a hard worker. You work as a welder. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I pretty much welded my whole life. It was kind of my God-given talent, basically. So mm -hmm. um, the writing thing kind of came in later when I decided that I needed to do something for some retirement and, you know, something that would make some money without having to put in a physical hour for it. So that's kind of what drove me to writing, but then I'm pretty happy that I have done it because I mean, I've got several I want to write. Right. And you've actually been recognized a lot for this work already. Um, a little bit, I think. Um, as far as uh, I've been through a couple of different publishers, which mm -hmm. didn't work out real well. The self-publishing world's kind of a tough one anymore. And mm -hmm. that actually found out that a lot of my royalties I was supposed to be receiving had been basically stolen from me but mm. anyhow it's onward and upward we'll go yep. from here you know and so yep that's but other than that i've been a welder since like 1978 gotcha. but i pretty much knew that i was going to be a welder from the time i was two if you can find you know if you can believe that but i imagine your dad or an uncle or somebody in your family was doing nope. it as well right oh no no, no really? I was, I'm, I'm the only one that yeah it's hmm. Kind of an interesting story in and of itself, yes. Yeah, because if you're not introduced to that stuff as a young age, it's kind of hard to pick it up. But obviously you did and you've excelled at it. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about your book. Um, I talked at the beginning about navigating this road of life. And we all do hit bumps and we do hit curves and unexpected twists. You've hit some as well. And that's oh. kind of your motivation, right? Yep, pretty much. It's uh, about my, yeah my everyday trials and tribulations basically and all the rough things I went through like addictions and drugs and stuff like that that I got over and I after I finally recovered which took quite a while I decided to write about that kind of stuff since I was knew so much about it anyway I'm I'm doing much better now because of you know healing and all of that and I had some I did a lot of reading also and been through a lot of different you know, programs, especially the government ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I, uh, no, I, that and I have psychiatrist friends and stuff like that. That So I have, I'm, you know, I have a lot of knowledge on all of it. So I have some good answers and some ways when to you help people out. Ask yourself the question, why, why do you think you uh, followed that path of self-destruction during times in your life? It, basically, most of it was born from my childhood, I think, yeah, a lot of the problems people faced in life later on anyways, pretty much always boils back to the childhood thing and different things. And when my, my mom and father got divorced, I think was the biggest part. And so, yeah, that's. And that was also very tough in the era that we were growing up. Not too many parents got divorced. No. And yeah. And uh, I come from a real small town in the Black Hills, it's Lead, but it had the largest gold mine in America, actually second in the world, I believe, uh, at the time. Mm. And uh, everybody worked in the mine. So all the families, I mean, it was it was a pretty nice, tight knit community and everything. So but my mom, after the divorce, they moved to Colorado. And uh, so when I came to Colorado, I was somewhat wild. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't have a whole lot of guidance, but that's it all worked out OK. Exactly. It doesn't matter how you get there. It just matters how you get there at the end. As long as you are there. Yeah. Yeah. Much. Right. <laughs> yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Was writing the book itself kind of therapeutic? Oh, it's huge. Huge. Yeah. I, yeah it's, after I got into it and everything, it, it helped me a lot just doing that. I, 
I would advise anybody to journal a little bit about their lives and it'll help you understand some of the decisions you made. Yeah, because once it's written down there and you can reread it and think about it and why did I do that? Why did I hang out with this person? Why did I do that this night? You know, you start to get the questions yeah. to the answer, you know, or the answers to the question that you pose there. Why? You know, why do you think, aside from yourself, people tend to be self-destructive, that they're trying to hurt themselves or punish themselves because of, you know, uh, bad feelings about themselves? So, sometimes, but mo most, most of the time, addictions come from trying to make yourself feel better. Mm. And you're trying, you know, it's a self-medication process that you do to, you know, try not to think about certain things or get over different guilts that you might have or, you know, things like that. And it, it all boils down to basically what we think about and uh, what our beliefs are, where, where our beliefs come from, you know, whether it be religion or, you know, whether it's right or wrong. I mean, that's, you know, it's all in the belief system. And if you can just get yourself to think positive instead of the negative, then, you know, you find your way out. Right. The actor Rob Lowe talks a lot about his addiction to both alcohol and drugs. And basically, he, said, he says it was fun. Uh, you know, he was 19, <laughs> 20 years old and partying with girls all over Hollywood or whatever. Oh, yeah. And he was being yeah. destructive. But at that time, at 20 years old, it didn't feel self-destructive until one day he realized that he couldn't get up and go to work. And that's when he realized that <laughs> I've got to stop. And he says from that point forward, he just completely stopped. I mean, it wasn't a tapering. It wasn't a 12 stop process for him. He was fortunate. He was able to just stop, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Some, some can, but a lot, most of them have a hard time. Once you get addicted to something, then the, the, the self guilt that you feel about being addicted really makes it even that much worse. So, but uh, there's programs like, I mean, the, I, I probably got more out of uh, the, the drug program that's, you know, available to the public, you know, Narcot Narcotics Anonymous, basically right. is what it is, just like the AA meetings. I like the Nar Narcotics Anonymous for the simple fact they cover all addictions. I mean, whether it be sex or whatever. Right. And, and I, got a, I, had a, I got a lot out of that. So, mm -hmm. but, and it's, that's what I would recommend if anybody's, out there and they are addicted to, uh, I mean, there's NA meetings everywhere in the world and they really do help. It just, just got to get yourself to one. And there's all you got to do is, I mean, they're, they're easy to find. Yeah. Yeah. There are resources out there. Like you said, if you want to find help, you can find help. If you, you know, it's got to start with yourself saying enough. I would imagine that's the point where you get to is enough. Yeah. Pretty much either that or something happens, you get thrown in jail or, you know, or nearly kill yourself. And, you know, it's all of a sudden you wake up and you say, man, I got to do something different. So, exactly. You get a good kick in the pants and you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. I can't go on like this anymore. Right. That's correct. Yeah. Tell us about what other books you have in your mind that you'd like to put onto paper, or maybe you've already put some on the paper already. Besides yeah. why. Well, the, the next one that's coming out is uh, Who the Hell's Mark the Welder? I figure after they read why and if they like it and kind of wonder where I got my ideas and stuff, it's pretty much why I wrote that. I figured that would answer them questions. But I've got several others that I'm going to write on the chapters that I have in the first book, like, you know, the as far as practice makes perfect, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. why are we addicted or, you know, and it's all pretty much – you could make a book out of any one of the chapters in there. So I'm going to exactly. do a couple of those. Yeah, exactly. Now you were born, you said in the black Hills, have you ventured back to the black Hills at all? It's a beautiful oh, yeah. part of the country. I, go, I, I pretty much, I ride my, my Harley up there every year to go visit. And the, the neat thing about it is it's uh, when I go back to my hometown, even though the house isn't there anymore, I mean, it's the lot is still there and that's usually kind of where I stay, but everything else that I, like all the paths and stuff in the forest and all that stuff, everything's all still exactly the same as it was when I was a kid, which is hard to believe, but yeah. That's also a great 
place to go and think. I often return to my hometown and I meet buddies that I worked with in the delicatessen when I was, you know, 14, 15 years old. And we get together once or twice a year. And as middle-aged to older men now, we hoist a beer or two. <laughs> yeah. And we, it, it really is a connection. You start feeling those feelings that you had as a teenager. And it's, it's really uh, quite a great experience. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I, I plan on buying some property up there and uh, moving back up there eventually here is yeah it's, yeah it's just a good Col place colorado itself is probably i think the most beautiful state that doesn't have an ocean attached to it yeah it's one of them for sure but there's so many people moving into the state right now too that it's getting pretty crowded so yeah um yeah it's changing its character a little bit have you um, been working on screenplays as well yes actually we did a short film to uh, promote the book and everything. And it, it's done pretty well actually in the, the, you know, the film festivals and all. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way all that came out. And it Wonderful. should work good. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, it's smart to, you know, work several different angles when you're trying to promote anything. And uh, I saw the short film and I thought it was wonderful. And uh, so congratulations on that. The well, name of the book is Why. It is written by Mark A. Murray. He is a welder by trade. He's also an author, and he has written a wonderful book that will help anyone cope with the struggles that they have in their life. And everybody has struggles in their lives. Mark Murray, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.